instructor and I've started recording. Thanks so much for your time. Hey everyone, welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today we have the lovely Marley Bird with us ready for another exciting class. If you're looking for tips and tricks on how to manage your time while knitting or crocheting, you're in luck because that's what we'll be talking about today. My name is Patricia from Your Inspirations and I'll be helping answer any questions you might have. Just pop them in the chat and we'll be sure that Marley answers them. So Marley, hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> We're talking about time management and yeah. organization for knitting and crocheting. Are you an organized or disorganized crafter? Well, I think that that's an interesting question, Patricia. And uh, first off, thanks for letting me come back here again for another Michael's uh, community classroom. I always have so much fun. Uh, to, as you know, today's a little bit different. I'm not actually knitting or crocheting. Um, actually feels a little bit more personal today, guys, right? Doesn't it? Because it's like, how do you stay organized? Um, so to answer your question, I am, I'm going to say I'm probably a more organized crafter than most people. And part of that is because I have to be as a professional, right? But let's just take a step back. Let's take away the fact that I own yarn sports, right? As a, a knitter and crocheter, just as Marley Bird herself, I have to keep my stuff organized. Otherwise, I, I forget about projects. I lose my, my like utensils and stuff, like all of my stuff that goes with my knitting and crochet. Um, I get overwhelmed with all of my ideas. So usually my head is most unorganized. So I have to find a place to put my ideas somewhere. So that way I can get them out of my head and I can move forward. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess overall, I would say that I am a, I'm an organized crafter. Now, if a professional organizer were to come into my life, they might be like, no, you're just kidding yourself, right? Um, but that's probably like most things. Like if a professional house cleaner came into my house, they'd be like, nice try, you know? Uh, so I, I do what works best for me. And uh, over the years, I've given some of these ideas and things that I've learned um, to some of my, my friends and, and my, my other students. And so I guess I'm going to share that with all of you today also. How's that? Yeah. Sound good. All right. <laughs> I see all of you here. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm interested to find out what you guys do to stay organized as well. So as I'm talking throughout this entire broadcast, I want to make sure that you have your chat open. And if you have an idea or something that maybe like, oh, I hadn't thought about that, or, oh, here's what I do share it in the chat room. So that Patricia can be sure to share with all of us also, because this could be like, <laughs> this could be a group project here to kind of stay organized. How about that? All right. Okay. So I'm just going to jump in as, as Marley bird, the crafter. Okay. So not Marley bird, the professional, because the professional Marley bird, I have a team that helped me stay organized on that side of stuff, but just my everyday crafting stuff and trying to stay organized with what I can in my life. Um, that's just me. So here we go for me. If I'm going to, dive into a project. Let's start at the very beginning because it's a wonderful place to start. We're going to pick a project. You know, maybe we go to Ravelry or maybe we go to yarnspirations.com or maybe we go to Michael's or maybe we go to All Free Crochet or All Free Knitting or whatever, whatever floats your boat. You find that project you want to make and you're like, oh, I got to make that, right? I got to make that. So the first thing you do is you either download the PDF or you print off the pattern, right? So the very first thing to keep track of is if you're downloading PDFs, have a folder on your computer or make a Google Drive folder for all of your patterns. All the patterns you want to make are in the process of making or have made. Start from the beginning of keeping yourself organized in that manner on your computer. Now, it's, it's not easy. Like it's seriously, it's one of those things that I started doing it later on in my career. And so in my career of crafting. And so I had to go back and spend like a couple of days organizing all the patterns I had accum accumulated and get them organized. But now I know where things are. So as I maybe put a project down for a couple months, if I don't have a hard copy in my project bag, I know where I can find it. Does that make sense? I know this might be something you guys are already doing. Great. If you're already doing it, fantastic. If not, you should totally just start doing it. Like make it that simple. If there's a website, say there's a website, you guys, that you really like to go to 
and you are using Google Chrome. And I'm gonna pick on Google Chrome because I use it all the time. What you need to do is save a folder in your bookmarks. I don't know if you know you can do this, Like you can save, you know how you can save bookmarks, but you can actually create a folder and then like say it's crochet folder and all the sites that you love to go and visit like marleybird.com or yarnspirations.com, drag and drop those URLs in that folder and you'll have them always really readily ava available to you on the computer where you don't have to type them in every time or go searching every time. You know exactly what you wanna look at and you don't have to deal with any of the outside riffraff coming in uh, and, and hindering where you wanna look, right? So that's a really good thing to start. Um, so you have a pattern, you now have things organized on your, on your own computer or your tablet or whatever it is. That's why I like Google and Google Drive is because it's portable. I have it on my tablet or on my phone, it's always with me. And you can keep things with you. Next part is to decide on your yarn, right? You're like, what yarn am I gonna do? And we're gonna pick on yarn right now because I do a lot of yarn. I don't know if you know this, but that's what I do. <laughs> and so you go to pick your yarn, whether you're gonna do it online or go to the store or search your own stash. What I like to do, and I've done this all along, is if I find a pattern I wanna make and maybe it calls for a specific yarn that maybe I've been wanting to try, I will first off usually see what store it's located at so that I can, I can go get it or order it. If it's a yarn that I'm like, mm, I've used that before, I prefer X number or whatever yarn, I know I have that in my stash, I will go find it. My reason here is if I have a pattern I wanna make and I already have the yarn in hand, I can now set up my plan to move forward with this project. Now, of course, there's gonna be patterns. You're like, oh, I'm interested in that. Maybe someday in the future, put those in like a future folder. But I'm talking about like, we're moving forward with projects we want, right? So you have your yarn, whether you went to the store and bought it or you ordered it and you got, you know, happy mail in the mail or you have it in your stash. Great. Now you're de-stashing. This is, you know, win-win conversation. Everything's awesome. You put it all together. I use project bags. I don't use Ziploc bags like at all ever. <laughs> I use project bags. I have a specific company I like to use because um, they do custom fabric and I, I like everything that they do. And I like the way they have the bags organized in such a way for knitters and crocheters that I, I use project bags for all of my projects. So I will then take my, I usually will print off my pattern also guys. So I, I have my digital copy, but I print off a pattern. I'm old school like that. I like to have a print pattern. Who else is with me? Show of hands. Who likes to have, I'll see. I'm not the only one. <laughs> I like to have a print pattern on me. Um, and then I put it, I put the pattern, at least two skeins of yarn, you know, at least two. And uh, the needles that I wanna use all in my project bag. And so like, for example, I mean, I'm just, we got all my project bag here to kind of choose from. I'm gonna just pick on this one. So like, this is my project bag. This is a smaller one, okay? This is a smaller project bag. It's by Erin Lane Bags. And what I love about this is, I pick a bag that's not gonna open first off because I don't want my stuff to fall out. If I'm gonna take all the time to put it all together, I make sure it all stays together. So this drawstring, even if I turn it upside down, it's, it's not coming undone. Like they're just fantastic. I have to literally put my fingers inside to make it come undone. And if you peek in here, you're gonna see I have yarn in here. I think I have a tape measure in there. Yep, I have, I have my work in progress tube. So this is a, um, some, some socks in the progress, but it's all here together. So that way I don't have to go searching for it. Does that make sense? You with me? So I just keep it all together. Now, how is that beneficial? How is that time management geared, right? Well, once I have everything together, I don't now have, I don't have to waste time going to look for my project. I always have it with me. Does that make sense? It's all together. Don't have to waste time looking for anything that I need. It's all together and great. Okay, I'm trying to think of how I move forward. Let's say I've picked a project. Let's, I'm gonna set this aside, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna put a pin in this and set this aside. Let's pretend I've picked a project that maybe it's, it's a bigger project, it's a sweater. And I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna put a sweater's, sweater's worth of yarn in a project bag with everything that goes with it. I'm not gonna do that. So what I typically would do is I would take the pattern and I, I would read through the pattern and I would decide, okay, what are some very manageable 
increments of like time, increments of sections of the sweater that I could work on and have those be my little goals to be my ultimate big goal. I used to tell my kids, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? Sort of the same idea. If you're gonna tackle a sweater pattern, you wanna make sure that you are tackling it in such a way that it's little bits at a time. It's not the, the whole sweater pattern as a whole. So I will read through a pattern and I'll, let's say I'm doing a top-down pattern. I'm gonna pick on that because you guys are getting, a, I'm doing a knit along for a top-down sweater pattern here soon. It actually gets announced on Friday. And so I have it broken down into sections. So let's say maybe you just do the collar bit for the first part. And maybe we work through the yoke portion for the second part to the armholes. And then maybe we do um, a, um, a little bit of the, the shaping for the body to the waist. And then we just do the waist. And then we just do the hips. And then we do the, the ribbing at the bottom. And so like, okay, great, the body's done. Now let's do one sleeve over here and then one sleeve over here. Great. So the whole body of the sweater is done. Now it's all about the finishing, but all of those can take little bits of time. So if you break that up and make a manageable bits of time, you're more likely to finish a project. Does that make sense? All right, Patricia, I'm going to have you jump in here. Questions, comments. What are people saying? I just feel like I'm talking a lot. <laughs> well, there's a lot to cover. Um, so Christy wants to know, can you talk about uh, making a plan to stitch with your stash? Oh, man. Well, we could How talk about it. How do you manage it. your stash? <laughs> do what'd you say? How do you manage your stash? How do I manage? <clears throat> well, I don't manage my stash very well. <laughs> I just keep accumulating. Anybody else? I just I'm really bad at that. Um, you know what? For me, Prior to designing, it used to be that when I would look at patterns, I would make a plan of picking patterns of for, for yarn that I had in my stash. And I would have them divided out of like long-term pattern, like a sweater or a blanket to more instant gratification projects, which for me would be like a pair of socks. Um, and so I would have a plan breaking up my stash that way. Now, there's also that, that part of me that's like, well, it's in my stash, but I'm really never going to use that. Like, it just looks really pretty on my shelf, right? So I, I cannot be the only one out here with that because I'll have the yarn and I'm like, yeah, I could, I could use that really great kiviet over there, but it just looks really pretty on my shelf. And so I'll never really, really use it. But if maybe I have like seven different skeins of Red Heart with Love and like a boysenberry color, I could be like, all right, well, that would make a really great blanket of some sort, right? So I could set that aside and, and sort of think to myself, I want to find the right blanket pattern to for, for that pattern, it's a so, or for that yarn, for it's a solid color yarn. It's a beautiful sort of rich purpley pink color. And I, I, maybe I want some texture with it. So maybe I start doing the search for what I want to work with that particular yarn. Does that make sense? So it's, it's very much, I think, a personal decision of what comes first, the chicken or the egg, you know, do you choose the yarn to go then pick the pattern or do you pick the pattern to then go choose the yarn? And I think you kind of have to decide there. Now, my friend, Lindsay Martin, she is very big on, on inventory. And so her stash is, is organized and it, she has an, an actual like inventory of it. That's a little bit extreme for me. I, I am not that person, but that works really well for her because then, and her, her inventory, it's on Google docs. Cause when she's at the store, then if she finds another yarn, she likes, she actually knows like what the dye lot is of what she might have in her stash. Like it's crazy. And so, but that's what she does. She calls herself an organizational superhero because she's amazing like that. Um, so you could, you could go that extreme if you are, and I shouldn't call it extreme, but that dedicated, if you want to be that dedicated with your, your journey through working through your stash, you absolutely could, but no shame in having more stash than what you can actually work through guys. Just, just don't let anybody tell you any different. You don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Just keep buying yarn because <laughs> it's awesome. Did that even answer the question very well? That was a good answer. Jen. Okay. Does collecting yarn and using it are two different hobbies? Yes, they are. They absolutely are. And Julia agrees. Okay, let's talk about making time for crafting. What, how do you set up the scene? How do you make sure that you have that time for play? Okay. So 
I learned to crochet prior to getting married and having kids, right? So for me, that was in college. So my creating time in college for crafting, it was always like after track practice, right after, before it was after track practice, before I would start dinner or something, I would sit down and I would crochet a couple rows on this queen size blanket I was working on, you know, just a couple rows, but it was a way for me sort of to decompress from, from the school day, from track practice to then having to make dinner, which Side note, nobody really gives you a warning that as an adult, you have to make that decision your entire life. And it is like one of the most daunting decisions. <laughs> like what's for dinner? I don't know. I just don't know. I don't care. Peanut butter and jelly, cereal, your choice, you know? So I guess even in college, I was sort of preparing myself of, all right, let's decompress from the day just a little bit so that I can get enough energy up to go and make dinner. <laughs> Uh, you had to do it. So in college, it was like, I just got in these little nuggets of time, or it was in between big projects that I was doing, big papers I was doing, where I needed to, to de-stress. I guess it was always about de-stressing for me. I've never really thought of it that way, but I would, I would sit and I would, I would crochet on, on bigger projects. Fast forward to several years where now, you know, I'm working, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and it was really hard to find time to crochet because I was still just crocheting. Um, I found that I would, I would be breastfeeding my baby and I would have the blanket over top of her. Like I would sit in such a way that I could have her doing her thing. And I would be crocheting like this. Right. And my husband would come home and be like, where's the baby? And I would like lift the blanket. <laughs> and he was like, well, that's unique, you know, but I'm just like, well, you just got to find, you got to find those times to do it. Since then, you know, I've learned to knit and I find that now as my kids are older, I'm older, the opportunities to, you know, sit and do things where I just have some decompressed free time, they're far and few between. So I actually have, um, so this bag right here, this is my sock bag that I keep in my car. It's another Erin Lane bag. If you guys don't know, like, I love these bags. This is actually my own fabric because that's my logo. And this particular bag, it just has a skein of yarn already wound up and a sock started on it, right? So, and this sock is doing a magic loop technique. So I don't really have to worry too much about stitches falling off. And when it comes to socks, this particular one, you know, it's self-striping sock yarn. It's, it's Peyton's uh, sock yarn. And I'm not gonna do any special stitch pattern. And as far as the pattern for the sock itself, it's so vanilla, it's so recipe and it's so built in my head that I don't need to look at a pattern for it. So I can pick this up if I'm sitting waiting for my kids to come out of practice or in between, like I'm actually a track coach now. So in between throwing and stuff when I'm trying to, to just chill out a little bit, I'll just, I'll knit a little bit or believe it or not guys, I'll throw that in my bag going into the grocery store. And when I'm in line at the grocery store, instead of picking up like all the tabloids and reading through them or looking like what the next crock pot, you know, recipe is in those little great crock pot books, you guys know, cause they're like crack. They're like, awesome. You pick them up. Um, I will grab my knitting and I'll sit and I'll, I'll knit in the grocery store line. And there's this saying that I heard from the yarn harlot many years ago, where she was in line knitting at the grocery store, which is where I got the idea. And she said, people would always say to her, Oh, I, I just don't have time to knit. I just don't have time to do that. Meanwhile, they're in the same grocery store with her in the same line with her looking through the tabloids. And she's like, yeah, you have, you have no time to do that. You're right. you absolutely have no time. Right. So it's just about capitalizing on the little bits of time that you might have. Um, it's easier with those smaller sort of small nugget sort of projects that maybe you don't need an actual pattern for. They're just like their recipes for yourself. Like I have a chocolate chip cookie recipe that's in my head, I don't have to look it up anymore. That's like what socks are for me or a garter stitch by a shawl. Like you don't really have to think too much about it. Um, those are, are great ways to make sure that when you find that you have a little nugget of time that you can pull out your work and, and work on it. Um, I'll share a quick little story with you guys. So for years, I've kept a little bag of knitting in my purse or in my bag or something. Um, and this is several years ago. My kids are older now. They're 19 and 17 and 15. Yay. Um, but when they were real small, my husband and I didn't get to go out on date night very often. 
So this one night we were going out on date night and I was just like, I'm going to be so focused on him. I'm not going to bring my knitting. I'm just going to, we're going to talk. We're going to have this great conversation and it's going to be awesome. Right? So we get to the restaurant and there's a long wait, even though we made a reservation, there's like this long wait. So we're sitting and we're in the bar area and I'm, I'm sitting, I'm going to back up. I'm kind of like this, like rocking and I'm talking, I'm talking to him. And he's trying to make conversation and I'm just like, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he goes, honey, where's your knitting? And I was just like antsy, like all antsy. And I said, I didn't bring it. I wanted to focus on you. He goes, don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again, <laughs> right? And I was like, okay, I won't, I won't do that again. But I guess it's just like, it's like my own little passy blanket, I guess. I don't know, it's maybe I got problems, but I have it with me all the time because it just relaxes me, you know? Um, and sports, I, mean, I keep talking about sports, but I was, I was an athlete, my kids are in sports and I get really ramped up. Like I'm, I'm the parent that's very excited on the sidelines. Like I'm respectful, but I'm excited. And so <laughs> there'd be times I'd get real excited and, um, there'd be like a referee who wouldn't be calling the game very appropriately for basketball. So my basketball friends who were the other parents, they'd be like, Marley, you need to pull out your knitting. You're getting a little bit too rowdy. And I'd be like, okay. And I'd sit down and I would just be knitting, like knitting furiously as I'm watching the basketball game. Cause it's like calming me down. Right? Like you couldn't tell cause I'm like this, but I guess my whole point of telling you these stories is that knitting and crochet play such a huge part in my life, both as a relaxation thing, but in those little bits of time, whether it's to relax or just to pass the time, I'm still keeping my time management organized by working on little projects. And with like these socks, these are going to be a Christmas gift. So um, the other one's already made because I've already worked through the whole thing. Um, here's another one that I have here. I can show you this. Here's another, this is a different bag. I love these ones because they have like the see-through so I can see what, what I have stashed away. Um, but like, so here's a sock I have on, but here's one that's already done. So these will be another Christmas present, but I'm just working through without actually like thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I got to get this project done. It's just a relaxing knit. And when it's done, it's like, great. Now I have something else just to put aside and have a project. I feel like that was a very long winded answer to tell you what you asked me. <laughs> That was very insightful. And, you know, I'm not surprised to see in the chat box that a lot of people see crocheting and knitting to relax, to distract themselves from mindfulness. So it's great to see that. We do have a question about your project bags. Oh, okay. How do you remember what's in the different project bags? That's funny. Um, I, I, I don't know how I remember other than I just remember. Um, I have a friend here. I'll show you these because I use these two on projects. Let me pull this out. Have you guys seen like, so this is a really big version of like the garage sale sort of things. You guys know what I mean? Those garage sale tags. So this is a big one. Like the, the garage sale ones are like really small. So I will buy these and I will use the yarn I'm using on my project and tie it onto my project. If I'm going to stash it away because I'm just like okay I'm not working on that anymore um, but I have friends who will use these on their project bags also like they'll clip them to their little clip here so that they know what's in there um, I don't know how I I don't know I guess for me I just know what's in each bag like I, I and I don't know I don't know how I don't have any special secret for it I just put things in the bag and I know what they are um, and it's funny because like I often will tell people like, oh, I'm looking, I'm looking for the Marley and Moogly bag. Do you know where it is? Like, I'll tell my kids that even though I know exactly what the project is inside, I don't, you know, I don't talk about what the project is. It's like, they're, <clears throat> they're one and the same in my brain. Um, the other, the only other thing is when it comes to like these ones where there's the plastic, if I can see what's in the inside. So that helps a lot. <clears throat> so like, like this one here, I'm in the middle of doing a bi crafty boot camp. So I have my Bi Crafty Bootcamp um, cowl in here with the extra yarn. And it's just, I'm just working on this. And so I know everything is right here that I need and I can do the see-through of the view you. Um, and so it just makes it really easy. I wish I had a better secret. I just, I don't know. I just, I guess, I just know what's in them. That's a really terrible answer, but that's the truth. I got, I got nothing else. Well, the texts are really helpful, I think. 
the tags would help. Yeah. Um, I, I don't use them on my bags. I do use them on projects. Um, and usually the tags I'll put on there, like, let's say it's, you know, apple bottom project with a size G crochet hook and Marley bird chic sheep yarn and started blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'll just put like little information like that on there. Yeah. Very nice. Laura has a really interesting question. She okay. says, so now I'm curious, how many projects do people generally have going at one time? Uh, it's usually one at a time. <laughs> she's a one at a time girl. Yeah. Laura's Bravo, Laura, you're a unicorn. So <laughs> make sure you go buy yourself a lottery ticket. Um, no, honestly, I know a lot of people who are one at a time project people, um, so much so they don't have a stash. I mean, <laughs> those people really exist, you guys. It's not like they're Bigfoot. They really do exist. Um, I have a friend named Janine who she only buys the yarn for the project she's working on, works at that whole project. And then as that's done, she'll now look at the next project. Like that's just her process. Um, I think the creative part of me, and this is my story and I'm sticking to it, the creative part of me cannot focus on one thing because I'm always thinking about what's the next other thing. Now, when that's different is if there's like deadline knitting or deadline crochet, because that's a completely different topic. And y'all who've made Christmas gifts or holiday gifts or birthday gifts or anniversary gifts or baby gifts, you know exactly what I'm talking about when you're up until three or four o'clock in the morning because you know that at 10 a.m. you have to go to that baby shower and present that, that baby blanket that's going to make everybody go ooh and ah, <laughs> right? Like the there, there's a different mentality to that. But overall, like I, I have, I have my long-term project that I'm working on, which is a sweater for myself. I have sort of like my midway projects and I would call those my, my shawls. I have two shawl projects that are going on and I always have at least four socks happening. And that's outside of my work projects. So I have my work projects also. Um, I do have contract knitters and crocheters because I cannot do it all myself. But for, for just Crafter Marley, that's what I have for myself. Oh yeah, Amelia says uh, that she generally has 10 to 12 projects using um, project bags all over the house. Project I was bags gonna are say. Cool. Yeah, and I don't like, I don't, I'm not a fan of Ziploc project bags. I've already talked about that. Um, I do like the plastic bags that with the zipper, like you can get like um, your linens and stuff in. Like those are, those are great because you can see through those. But here's a little tip for you guys. If you don't like the smell of dryer sheets, this obviously isn't gonna work for you, but I happen to like the smell of these dryer sheets, but one whole dryer sheet in a project bag is too much for me. So I will quarter the dryer sheet and put it in my project bag and it helps it like smell good. And I was told, I don't even know if this is wives tale or not, but I was told it helps keep critters out and stuff. Um, but it also, it just makes me feel like if I've set it aside for a long time, I'm not coming back to like this old sort of stinky smelling yarn. It just makes it smell good. So um, I use dryer sheets, but I quarter them in my stuff. Anybody else do that? Anybody else? Nobody else? It works really well too. If you happen to travel, I know we're in the middle of, of a pandemic and stuff, but when traveling starts, if you throw a dryer sheet in your suitcase, it helps your clothes smell good your whole trip. I've never heard of that. I want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's next, Patricia? Okay, so if you have multiple project bags mm -hmm. and multiple projects at the same time, how do you pick what to focus on at each particular time? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so I have lists. I have lots of lists of different things. And remember, I told you guys, like, I have a lot of ideas and stuff in my head. And I've got to get them down. So I use the, the Happy Planner pages. I'm not necessarily a planner book. Like I don't have things blocked out for each day and stuff. I have a calendar, but that's not how my brain works. I have to keep like a running list of like, I have a list of things here. Let me just show you, you guys want to, you guys want to get an insight, <laughs> inside peek at my head, like nod your head if yes, if no, or whatever. Okay, here we go. Let's go to my hands. Okay, so you guys know what I'm talking about, like these kind of, plan or project things. Like you can go to Michael's, you can find all sorts of different pages that are set up with bullet points and like spaces for you to write out anything you want. And then they're all perforated in such a way that they fit great in your planner. Um, I love ones like this where it's nothing specific. It's purely like you can write what you need to do right here and you can check it off when it's done. 
one thing that you could do is like, say you have, you have a, say you have a, like a couple of things you got to make. You got some birthday projects coming up. You've got your own, like, I want to refresh my, my, my dishcloth collection, whatever it may be. So you have a list of your projects that you have listed out here. I would find the one that's most important deadline wise and figure out, like for me, I would figure out over here. So like, for example, let's just, for example here. So my biggest, my next biggest thing for me, I have a sock class that I'm putting together. So I have a sock class that I need to come up with 10 different patterns, right? So I have 10 different patterns. So at this point I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And then as I'm creating those patterns, I would write their names everywhere because I don't know what they are. I'm not gonna worry about them now. But let's say that I need all of these done by August 1st, right? So then I could take the time I have from today till August 1st and kind of divide it up to be like, okay, so I get, let's say I get a week for this, a week for this, a week for this. I mean, I'm sure that's too much time from where we're talking about, but you understand what I'm saying, right? So I would get, I would break it up to where I have my time there. So let's say I have the sock class. I have my no long videos that I've got to film. And my first one there is June 7th has, I have to have my first one completed. And then I also, what else do I have going on? I have, oops, of course, you guys saw me put this on do not disturb. All right, I got to switch this again. I did it and I don't know why it does that to me every time. I don't know why, I'm so sorry. All right, and oh, every single time, every single time. All right, so we're gonna go like, we're gonna go like this the best we can. Okay, so June of the knit along videos. And then I have what I'm doing, the buy crafty games for the Olympics. And I have to have those or that done by June 25th. Okay. So obviously I can see on here, I mean, this is, this is common sense stuff. You guys totally get this. You have August and June and June. Obviously this one's going to be my most important one. This one's, this is an important one because this is a hard deadline because I have the knit along starting on the 11th, right? So the knit along starts on the 11th, but everything for me is due on the 7th. So this is going to be top of my list, even though it's second down here, it's going to be top of my list. But at the same time, while I'm doing this in between filming and editing and doing all that stuff, I will still be working on one of these patterns. So that way I can tackle it out. Does that make sense? And this here, even though <clears throat> this is August and this is June 25th, this here, I will, I will most likely focus on this after the videos are done. Cause this is another big project. These remember when I talked about socks for me are bite size their bite size sort of in between projects. So these will all be my bite size projects and this will be my big one. So this one will be my, hey, it's gonna take a lot of time. When you need a little break from it, you're gonna come back to up here. So I keep a running list. Does that make sense so far? So I'm gonna open my book here. All right, here we go. Wait, get this open. I keep everything in here. I keep patterns that I'm like working on. <laughs> And I have pages and pages of notes just to get things out of my head. And like, this is an older one. So this is the Nomad Fair Owl note. So this was a sweater knit along that I did in 2020. And I just, I kept notes of the things I wanted to make sure that I talked about when I was doing the whole knit along. I just, I just wrote them out to get them out of my brain so I could work on it. This is my Michael's classes from a while ago. Um, just again, other notes, you'll see, I just break down notes, but this is the more important one that you want to go to. Let me keep going. You can see I keep all sorts of things. Here it is, the checkoff list. So this one here, this is one of my favorites, and I'm sure this is probably like you could use it for, for dinners or for, um, like literally just about anything you want. But for me, I was like, okay, here are a bunch of patterns that I have that are my own patterns that I could film videos for. So it rather than kind of breaking my head of, oh, what pattern should I do a video for next or something? Like I wrote them all down so I could go through and check one off. I could do a video for it. I could reformat the pattern for it. I could do anything. So like I have a checkoff list here, right? 
And then on the back here, this was an idea of, okay, we really are working a lot with mosaic stuff. What are some other mosaic patterns we could do? So I was writing out ideas for that. Um, again, here are more of my own patterns that I have. This was an idea for different patterns to work into, but you can see here, it's literally like, it's like a brain dump. I just need to get everything written out so that way I can have a plan. Um, these were just some of my basic goals. And obviously these ones here, I typically don't go through and check things off. It's more along the lines, hey, here's, here's what I have in mind as far goal oriented for my 2021. So I, I write them down so I can uh, try and attempt to achieve them, right? But here's the next big thing. These pages right here, these project goal pages, I don't know where you could, I don't know, I, I, I know you can get these at Michael's or whatever, but these are fantastic, especially for what we're talking about. Cause you could put the name of whatever pattern you're doing up here and then just start breaking it down for yourself. What do you need to do? So like for me, I didn't even fill it in very much over here. But my game day event, I was like, okay, I'm going to do a game day. I think I'm going to do a Japanese top, a knot bag. It's good for slow knitters and fast knitters. We could felt it if we wanted to, like that was a suggestion. This was my own little sketch of this is what I want to do. And then I had like vague, not vague. I had time frames of what I wanted to do. How many hours are we going to do it? So on and so forth, right? Um, same thing as we go on. Like I have, I told you I had the buy crafty game games coming up. I've already got things started off here as, you know, little ideas for myself. Do I want to start with a tab? Do I want to make it asymmetric? Do I want to do an I cord? There's 17 days to work from. Um, if you wanted to buy the box, I have to make sure I have everything ready to go for the 25th. And then I was like, how do I, what are some like key phrases, different things we could use? So like, I just use things like this um, for, this is obviously work oriented. You could easily do this for a project. You could write out your project, what yarn you're going to do, um, maybe give yourself deadlines for yourself. Um, I mean, just fill it out. That's just a terrible explanation. That's what I got. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Does that help any of you at all? I mean, this is, this is, this is my world. This is where I land. I'm much more of the list kind of person. I'm much more of a let's write things down so that I have something to check off and make sure things are getting done. Um, like that's, that's important to me. And I will often go back to some of these lists and look at them and be like, oh yeah, I should have done that. You know what I mean? Or, oh, I could still do that. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how that goes. I don't know. Is that helpful? You can go back to my face now. I feel like I've shared a lot. <laughs> it's very personal. <laughs> Well, I'm surprised to see Brianne says she uses an, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Oh yeah, that would work too. I'm, again, I'm so old school that, I mean, I have, I have the Google drive, Google docs. I have a Google calendar. I mean, this is not an, a video for Google by any means, but that's what I use. Um, but I, I write things down and it, it triggers in my memory a lot better. So I, I like to write things down. Um, plus pens are cool. Like, I don't know if you guys have been to the store lately. I um, they have some really great pens and stuff you could get. Like <laughs> there's some, they're fun. And any excuse to buy school supplies is a win in my book. So why not? Um, like these ones have smelly scents. Like, come on. <laughs> you can what, how does that not make you happy? So, um, yeah, I'm that person. I'm sorry. I hope I'm not like totally like ruining your view of me by any means, but I, I, um, yeah, I like to write things down. And there's also something really gratifying of crossing things off, right? Oh yeah. It oh, feels yeah. good. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Lisa. Oh, sorry to interrupt you. Lisa has a question about, uh, how do you track how much time or hours a project takes for you to finish? Oh gosh, I don't. It would be depressing, <laughs> especially if you're making a project for money. Like it's very, cause then you start calculating how much money you're making an hour. Like I, I don't, I don't do that. Like I'm sure all of you have been online in the different forums or groups or whatnot. And it's like, you know, Hey, somebody commissioned me to make a blanket and you know, how much should I charge an hour? And I mean, we all know the real answer is you really can't charge by the hour because nobody would be able to make, to afford that blanket, right? You have to, it, it, it all, 
sort of comes together. It's like, you have to work. I call it piecework. It's like, here's, here's your project. Here's what you're going to make for it. Or here's, here's how much you're getting paid for it. Whatever time you have in, you know, outside of, how do I say this? It's piecework. Here's your project. So let's say I'm, I'm paying somebody to make a blanket for myself. Um, let's use my contractors for an example. I will contact one of my contractors and I'll say, Hey, I need you to make a, a throw blanket for me. I'll pay you $200, $250. I'm going to send you the yarn. So you don't have to buy the yarn. You don't have to pay for postage to send it back to me. I'm going to cover that. So purely for your time, I'm going to pay you $200, $250. Is that worth it to you? Here are your, here's, here's when you're going to get it. Here's your deadline. This is how much time you have. They then have to step back and make that decision for themselves. Okay, let's say it's three weeks. Let's say it's four weeks. Um, typically, it would be three weeks. And they have to decide, okay, what other projects do I have going on? Can I accomplish this particular project in three weeks? Is it going to take me the full three weeks? Could I finish this in a week and send it back to her? Is, I mean, it's not going to affect the amount of money she gets. You know, all of my, my contractors happen to be female. So it's not going to affect the amount of money they get or she gets if, if she finishes it in a week. And then if she finishes it in a week and I have two more projects and she can make two more blankets, then she's, you know, she's making 200 for each blanket in that three week time frame. Does that make sense? So at the end of the day, at that point, it becomes more of um, sort of a business decision um, for yourself. You have to decide, okay, is that worth my time? How much time is it going to take me to do it? Um, and I, I totally don't think about it hourly because then it would be very depressing. It's it's more of a project base. I hope I'm, I'm not offending anybody. I'm not meaning to offend anybody, but no, that that's makes how sense. much that's that's a real number like that's how much I pay my contractors to make a, a, a blanket um, a crochet blanket a knit blankets they get a little bit more because knitting takes more time um so it's just the way it is but I su I supply the yarn so that's always something too like this is a whole other conversation but if you're going to go into making stuff for yourself you guys um, to sell you have to very much so calculate the amount of money to buy the the actual projects um or that not the project buy the yarn the supplies that answer? I also wonder, yeah, no, that's super interesting. I also wonder if <laughs> as a regular knitter who's not going to sell anything, if there's any value in also tracking how long something took you so that you could compare it to the next project and see if you're getting faster. I don't know. You could. I don't know. I don't know. I am. Um, is anyone in that quote? <laughs> I get it. I mean, I see somebody, Lisa's talking about, you know, people will ask you, well, how long did it take you to make something? Um, I'll mm -hmm. do me just in general, like people will always ask, how long does it take you to pick a pair of socks? And then the answer is, well, you know, you can go buy them at Walmart. Yes, I know I can go buy them at Walmart, but I'll, 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 here's my, here's my real answer for how long it takes me to make a sock. You ready? And this is multitasking at its finest. You ready? <laughs> I like to knit at church. I know that I can get through the cuff of a sock during one service. I can get through half of the leg during another service. I can do the other half of the leg during another service. Then I can do, let's see, this will be four. Then I can do the heel and the heel turn for another service. Then I get through the foot and then I can get through the toe. So however long the services are, it's pain. I mean, I guess they're usually an hour, hour and a half, maybe two, it all depends on what, what we're talking about that's how long it takes me so that's that's how i figure it out and i mean that's i mean i'm sure you guys have probably calculated well i watched how many episodes of friends and then i watched cheers and then i went to mad men and then i mean i totally am dating myself but you know what i mean like you can calculate yourself if you go that way um and here's the honest truth guys i stopped watching tv and i listened to audiobooks because i was so in tune to the fact that i just watched a 30 minute um, episode of something that I was like, I just spent 30 minutes on this. I just spent 30 minutes on this, that I was so consumed by the time that when I listen to an audiobook, is the longer, the better. I'm not consumed by how much time I've just spent. Like, I know that by the time I get to the end of the audiobook, it's a 17 hour audiobook, but I'm not like, I could work on it for five hours and it could feel like an hour. Does that make sense? So, um, I am, I'm a big fan of audible.com because that's, I mean, I can, I can listen, I can knit. So I'm multitasking once again um, and expanding my brain that way. Yeah. That's a really cool way of tracking your time. It was a podcast or two. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can't, this is going to sound funny because I have, I have a podcast 
it's on hiatus right now, but I can't listen to podcasts. <laughs> it's, it's so weird to me. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. Audiobooks are good too. <laughs> I love them. I love them. Okay. We have um, Maria. I know we talked about doing things old school and having an agenda, but have you heard of any apps to keep track of everything? Yeah. There's a wonderful app called Knit Companion that will really help you um, as a knitter. I'm not going to go into it. Like, I don't want to make an ad for Knit Companion, but if you're a knitter, like get on it, check it out. It will help you stay super organized. It's fabulous. Um, I also use Ravelry. It's a free service. You can get on, I mean, that service. It's a free website, database website. You can go to look at patterns and you can log your own stuff on there. There's a whole place you can do stuff on there. Um, those are the two big ones I use. I'm sure there are others out there, but I'm not familiar with them and at all, even enough to say their names. Like those are the two that I use. Um, yeah, those are those are really good online uh, places. And do anybody else have any? Oh, see, somebody else says they use Knit Companion. Knit Companion is good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah, the Ravelry. I love the Ravelry library. I, I use Ravelry quite a bit. I don't use Ravelry for the forums, but I use it for the organizational aspect and the the pattern aspect. Uh, the project bags that I'm using. Um, so the project bags that I use, I use Erin Lane bags, E-R-I-N-L-A-N-E -E bags. Um, they're, they're some of my favorite. You can see like those of you who participated in my tournament of stitches, like here, here are my tournament of stitches colors. And I was working on, this is the pillow portion. So I'm like half of the pillow is done, but I have it all set aside in my project. So it's all together in one bag. And again, this one here, they don't all have drawstrings, but some of my favorite ones are the drawstring. Um, obviously I showed you the ones, the view ones that they have a zipper and they're convenient because the strap here, like I can put it on my, my arm and I can knit from it. Like it's just, it's just real convenient. Um, so those are the project bags I use the most. I also, on the same note of sort of organization when it comes to them is you know what, you might have to come down to my hands for this one. Let me move this over here. Okay, so not only do they do project bags, they do other stuff that I, I find really useful. Um, so like this is a little, little doodah sort of keeper. And so I'm able to keep my crochet hooks in here. I keep a highlighter so that way I can highlight different section of the pattern I'm keeping on or working on. Um, I used to have yeah, so here's a button. I actually just, I had um, several of these and I was sewing them on something, so I kept them all together. But I like to have all of my stuff in one place um, so that way I don't have to go looking for it. So I have one of my little tags here so that I could sew it on if I want. I have elastic here that if I wanted to add it to my socks, because I told you guys my socks are like my, my everything. So if I wanted to add elastic to it, I could, um, have this quickly pull it out and add it in. I have my tape measure. I have stitch markers right here. These are super easy to make. I have my bent tip tapish needle, but I have everything in one little place. And the great thing about this is that there's a magnet in here. Which one is it? There's a magnet. And so the magnet itself, where did it go? All of a sudden, Dude, because I'm talking about it, the magnet is like not here now. Oh, it's the first time this has ever happened. Anyways, there's a magnet here. Oh, there it is, it's right there. It snaps in place and so it keeps everything in order. Um, the other thing I like are these roll things and this is a great thing. If you're always looking for your crochet hooks or your double pointed needles, these things are awesome. Because you can waste a lot of time looking for your needles in general. Um, so let's just focus on these ones here. But this roll pack here, it unrolls and you can keep a bunch of crochet hooks in here. And then as it rolls, you roll it back up. The great thing about this, so there's a magnet right here, okay? And there's a magnet in this end right here, okay? So let's put them together. So you put it together, you're like, but wait, Marley, like it's not, it's not tight right? It's not tight. Or maybe you're like, I don't have that many crochet hooks, so it's not going to be tight. But here's the beauty, right? This magnet here slides. So once it's there, you slide it. So it, it moved. 
it tightens up the strap and now everything is in place where it needs to be. So I love these things. Like I keep these things, I have so many of them. So right there, there's the magnet here. I can make my magnet wider. So there, if I, if I had more tools in there, I could keep it wider or tighten it up to be the size I need it to be. Other than that, then I keep all of my double pointed needles in here all in one place. So I don't have to go looking for them. But those are super, super helpful and handy. Um, time management, time saver to keep things like these going. Um, and I like the fact that it's a woman owned company and she's she's making it happen. So I like it. Uh, I, I collaborate with her quite a bit to make different fabrics on my own. So like this was a fabric I did with Moogly. You guys know Moogly. She's been on here several times doing Michael's classes. Like there's the Moogly logo and there's my logo and we're having like a yarn ball fight. So like we worked with a cartoon artist to put that together. And then we had fabric made up. And so then we made a bag. So those are the, those are the bags I use. I will also show you guys so these little things in the, in the like dollar area at Michael's, these, um, you guys have probably see these. I mean, these, it's like, it's like the best little bin area ever. You can get these little bin things and they work really well as a sock or not sock as a um, yarn holder. Like if you don't have a, you know, something, maybe you're work. I can't, I'm, my words are leaving me. Maybe you're working on a project where you need a, a yarn bowl, but you don't have a yarn bowl. So you could separate these out and put little yarn in each one. You could feed it through here. Just be careful that you don't, um, like you're not using a yarn that's gonna snag there too much. But these are helpful for that, but they're also helpful. Like I was gonna, I do a lot of stuff with beads. Like I was actually gonna make, um, gosh darn it. Sorry guys. So I was gonna make some um, stitch markers so I bought a lot of lettered beads and stuff, but I was gonna separate them out in the yarn bowls or not yarn, see, I'm already calling them yarn bowls, but in the plastic bowls. Um, and then these little containers here, you can see here, I have little clips in here, but I also have one that I have, that I keep my stitch markers in. Um, I just probably should have grabbed it out earlier. Uh, it must be over on my, my studio desk. Anyways, I keep stitch markers in one also, so that way you have them handy. But these things are really great to um, just like pick them up right there at the checkout line at Michael's. They're super helpful, they're easy to use, and they're cute. And they're not expensive, like at all. So um, really good way to help keep your stuff in order. Another thing, if you like making stitch markers um, and like maybe just jewelry in general, Gosh, let me clear out my space here. So now I'm showing you all my stuff. Everything's taking up my space. So if you like to um, buy like, I don't know, like monthly gift boxes or something, maybe you're part of like the, the dog box or whatever it is. If you keep the boxes, you can use these to help organize all of your stuff, all of your jewelry items. Um, Here's a little thing too here. These are all stitch markers. It's just a fun little thing. Um, I also have, do you guys know like those iced tea, like the plastic iced tea things? Those are great to store your crochet hooks. I can't, I have them, they're in my other bag, so I can't go grab them. Um, but those are really handy. But keeping, keeping things like this where you can keep things together. But then also like this is, you know, a real simple storage box, but just keeping your your supplies for making your stitch markers all together in one area can make it really easy to just have a relaxing moment if you just wanna get away from knitting and crocheting. So you have all the tools you need all in one little place. You have extra beads. You have all of the beading wire or beading thread, whatever you need here. So that way you don't have to go searching for things when you just wanna have a little bit of break. Um, but this little, I'm pretty sure I got this at Michael's. It's just super easy just to keep everything all together. So you could just make yourself some little stitch markers, carry this around with you. It's like a little caboodle back in the day. Super easy stuff. I don't know. Does that help at all with anybody? I've tried to, this was my attempt to expand beyond knitting and crochet because I don't know about you guys, but I am like, I love working on a lot of items that are not just knitting and crochet. You know what I mean? I think um, 
I don't know. That's just what I do. So yeah, I haven't been in like these things here, like these little wood bead things. Like you could crochet around beads like that and actually make um, a necklace or something. You can knit around them also. It's really, really fun. Anyways, okay, you can go back to my face. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, Patty has a question. Do you need or crochet when you travel? If so, what needles or hooks do you carry that security doesn't confiscate? So I have never had security confiscate anything in the U.S. knitting or crochet wise. So I bring I bring my I bring my Chagu needle set actually um, with me, and I've never had any issue at all. Um, I also keep crochet hooks with me when I travel. Um, I tend to travel with a sock. <laughs> Shocker. Um, I tend to travel either with a sock or um, entrelock because you don't have to turn your work very much, right? On entrelock, I can knit backwards so I can just keep my hands right here and I just knit back and forth. Um, and then small projects, which is why I like a sock because it's real easy for me just to maintain, um, you know, consistency with it. And if I'm on a plane, I usually, I'm always, I mean, I'm almost always using circular needles in general, but on a plane, I'm specifically using circular needles. That way I don't accidentally drop one. And then I'm out of luck for the whole flight if I'm using double points or something. So yeah, I've never been stopped ever for knitting and crochet items. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I never have. Knock on wood. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm not sure we have time for one more question. Maybe we can sneak it in really quickly. Laura has a question about, oh yes, here it is, about your um, stitch markers. What oh. do you use for the clip or pin part to then attach the beads? Um, so I use, so I have a video on this on my YouTube channel where I have, like I use the, the metal string, I don't know what the bead on bead string where it's the metal and it, you come around and I slide the beads up and I use a crimp on the bottom. I like that. Um, I also use wire and I form it so that, and then I wrap it. So be, I guess it's wire wrapping. I'm not, <laughs> I am a novice jeweler. So I am not using the right terminology. So if you're a jeweler out there, I'm so sorry. That's, I, I do the wrappy thing <laughs> and I cut it and make sure that it's flush my file a little bit and it fits my knitting needle, it's a win. Um, and then I use uh, lobster clasps. Um, I like those quite a bit. And then um, the other thing, and this is a video I wanna do too, it's actually on one of my lists, is um, a row counter. So it's their jump rings with numbers in between each jump ring and you move it every time you start a new round and it will help you keep track of you. It's fantastic, you guys. If you're a knitter or a crocheter, because you could adapt it for a crochet, they are fantastic. Um, so yeah, I like to use those. They're a lot of fun. And somebody mentioned on here, don't bring scissors on a plane. Here's a pro tip, you guys ready? Because I know we're coming to the end of the school year, but when back to school happens, go to the back to school sales at the store and buy the school scissors, the ones with the short, I don't even have them here because I'm not these ones. These ones are too long. Okay. But the ones that look like this, where they're, this part is a little bit shorter. You guys know what I'm talking about. They're usually like a dollar or $2 during back to school stock up on those because they're a blunt tip. You can take those on the plane. Plus now you have a lot of needles that you or not needle scissors. You can put in all of your project bags. So you no longer have to search for scissors. Best decision I've ever made in my whole life was to stock up on scissors. Yep, they're fantastic. And if you have scissors at your desk that it's like you don't want anybody to use them or you're always mm -hmm. losing them, add a pom pom to them and you don't lose them. I know it looks ridiculous, but that's the point. Like, I don't lose my scissors. Like, I know exactly what they are. Okay. That is great. I feel like this topic, we could probably spend the whole afternoon here. Yes, Maria. Yes, those are great scissors too. Yeah, we could talk like I'm sure I'm sure you guys have some wonderful ideas out there yourselves, which are fantastic. Like, I mean, I should do a whole nother like, like whole discussion about this and even bring Lindsay and come on and talk about stuff because she's like, fan yes, Elizabeth, those are awesome. The plastic tools, Maria. Yes, those are good. She has a plastic container. Um, there's there's so many there's so many different ways that, you know, as crafters, we we tend to upcycle a lot of stuff, too. So that is really good. Um, I don't know. I'd love to hear what everybody else is doing. Yeah. All right, Patricia, you're, you're up, you're on. <laughs> All right, guys. 
Thank you so much for joining us today for this live community room with Michaels. I hope you had fun and don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag your inspirations. Just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. Thanks for joining us.